and I'm coming to realize that, oh my goodness, like the Western society has made this Islam like a bloodshedding, killing, like like all the pieces were coming together. Like like I, I wasn't aware of, of Islam, but I guess, uh, you know, the media, they make the, the, the Middle Eastern men with, you know, that wear the turbans and the, the they call, like a dress, but obviously a thobe. Like they make the, those men seem like those are the two, those are the, the killers. And so I'm connecting the dots and I'm like, wait a minute, no, they're not, they're not that, they're, they're Muslims and they're, they don't want to hurt anybody. And why is, why does the world not know about this? I, I have the truth in my heart. I still have hardship and I still go through, you know, hard things every single day. I face the, the struggle, but, but when you know, you know, and I have the truth in my heart. So Alhamdulillah, for Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the dunya, the three Muslim. Today, we are joined with another very special guest. You might recognize her from TikTok, YouTube, and other places where her lovely clips are being shown. This is Muslim Brooklyn. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, it's a good day. We haven't had any rain here in Texas in months. And the last two, there's, it's flooding. It's literally flooding in Dallas. So alhamdulillah, there's lots of, uh, lots of life coming down, literally. Allah, mashallah, yes, yeah, so the rain is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the best times to make dua. So, you know, take a, take a hold of that, make good use of it, inshallah. And with that being said, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, speaking of blessings, you're just telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with the opportunity to give two people their shahadas on live. And I can't help but wonder, how did Muslim Brooklyn become Muslim and how did it get to this point? So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and how it got to this point where you're giving shahadas live? It's it's definitely like a crazy, you know, story. Like who would think this this uh, white girl, country girl from Arkansas, Oklahoma. Uh, I grew up in a town, a tiny town of 900 people, guys. Little country town, not even a stoplight in the on the road, you know. And the whole town is Christian. Uh, does everybody really practice and go to church every Sunday? No, but um, I've never, I never seen a Muslim um, in my life until I was 25. I did not know, uh, I did not know that there were Muslims and that they follow a religion called Islam. Um, I never seen a woman wrapping her head. Of course, when I became Muslim, I started seeing them everywhere. I was like, where have you guys been? <laughs> They've been there everywhere. But I, um, growing up, I, I went to church, the same church my whole life, uh, Southern Baptist in, uh, in this small town I'm from. And, you know, I, I tried to read the Bible. Like I, I tried to focus in on it, but I could never like, I could never understand what it was saying. And even when I went to church, I, no matter if I was not tired going in church, every time I would be falling asleep listening to this man speak. I would go, what are you saying? Anyways, I always believed in God. I always prayed at night before I went to bed. And it was, I'm not going to lie, it was uh, hard growing up. As a little girl, I didn't have my mother or my father. So my, my father actually passed away when I was like two months old. And my mother, subhanAllah, she was, you know, going through, you know, her own thing. And she just wasn't there, you know, um, the struggle like of violence, drugs. I just seen a lot as a little girl. And so I had I had no love I had nobody to show me. I had no guidance from from the people that were around me. So I always turned to God. I always prayed to the Heavenly Father, you know, please guide me to the straight path. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And that is literally the prayer that I prayed until I was like five to 25 years old. And I just never stopped asking for that guidance. I knew that I knew that it could always be worse. Don't get me wrong. That's I was very grateful. But I just knew that if my creator was guiding me, then if I'm homeless, if I'm poor, if I have nothing, as long as I'm being guided, then inshallah, then I'll be okay. And I don't know why 
I, I really look back on this and I think, how did I, how did I know to even ask for guidance? I don't remember anyone teaching me this. I just continuously, every time I prayed, I never asked for God, give me money or God, give me nice clothes or this. I just, please guide me, please guide me. I want to do, be guided. And subhanAllah, like, I don't know. Once I, once I like got into my teenage years, I remember one day at school, uh, we were eighth grade and we were talking, the, the conversation of the Bible came up and these boys, these girls, everybody's like, the Bible has to have been changed. Like it's not the, it's not the, the same Bible that when it was like created. And I remember thinking about that and I'm like, yeah, like it, it wouldn't make sense uh, that, you know, people have kept rewriting it and translating it, re-editing it and just, it's definitely not what it should be. And so I kind of started drifting away. I stopped kind of going to church. I still went and just not as much. And about 19 years old, I started like, I don't think I'm really religious anymore because I don't believe I needed to go to church to have a connection with God because hmm. I always kept praying and I, I knew Allah was with me there. So basically, um, yeah, like, I didn't even know about Islam. I was not looking for Islam. I was not looking for a religion. I wasn't really looking for that. I don't know. I, I actually went through a phase about 20 years old when I was like, believe in the universe, like not really believing in the universe because I still was praying every night to God, but like law of attraction. And if you want it, you can like, if you believe you can receive and manifest it and, you know, ask the universe and it will, it will provide like, that was like a little two year thing. And that's really when I was like lost, started going, I was really going like what I was doing for my work was very haram. What I was, I was involved in just sin and I was, I was glorifying it. I wanted to get rich and famous. I wanted to, I wanted to do my raps. I wanted to start like showing people what I could do so I could get filthy rich and then I could give it away. Cause I really did want to help people. I wanted to feed people. I wanted to really help the world. I didn't know how I was supposed to do that unless I guess maybe I use what God gave me as talent to, to su succeed, I guess, but either which way to wrap it up, I to wrap it up. I was 25 years old and I uh, was still praying the same prayer. Dear heavenly father, please guide me the straight path in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. And, um, Growing up, I didn't really know if Jesus could hear me, like, because he's supposed to be like a part of the Trinity. But I knew that only one could hear me. So it was really confusing. It was obviously like there's so many questions like, why is Jesus the son of God? How come Moses can't be the son of God or Abraham, Ibrahim, Islam? Like, why, why does Jesus get that status? So as a Christian, I just had so much confusion. And when you ask questions to the church, they say, just have faith because this is where blind faith comes in. Anyways, I I met a, a, a Muslim brother, and I I was like, this guy is like sincere. Like I've never met somebody like this. Like he was just so nice and respectful, and didn't make me feel uncomfortable. And one day we started talking about God, and he asked me like about prophets and what do I believe about God and. I, he told me what he believed, which is, you know, God is only one and Jesus and all these prophets, they were, they were prophets. And I said, that's what I believe. And, you know, the angels, the, the holy books and the day of judgment, I said, yeah, I, I, I know this. Like as a Christian, we believe this, but he just had so much more details to the story. I did some research. A couple of weeks later, I became Muslim. I gave up my job. My haram job, I gave it up. The music, the rapping, the glorifying my sins, I gave it up. I, I said, he told me, if you give up something for Allah, for God, then he will give you something way better. I gave it up. Two weeks later, I was Muslim. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, we are here. It's two and a half years later, and I, I have the truth in my heart. I still have hardship, and I still go through you know, hard things every single day. I face the, the struggle, but... But when you know, you know, and I have the truth in my heart. So, Alhamdulillah, for Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. So, it seems like it was something that was really smooth in the beginning. Was there anything in particular that really stood out to you about Islam where you're like, okay, this is the truth? 
Yes. So the thing was that I did not, I was so ignorant as a Christian. I thought, you know, growing up, like, you know, it wasn't easy, but I still like had this sense of I'm special. God loves me. I knew God loved me, but like not in like an arrogant way, but low key an arrogant way. Cause I was like, if you're not Christian, see, it's, it's so ironic. Cause even though I had all these confusions and questions about Christianity, I still in the back of my head was like, if you're not Christian, then you're wrong. You must believe in some other God. I was so ignorant. I did not even know that there was a, I didn't know that there were three Abrahamic faiths. See, they don't teach you this as a Christian, but in Islam, I've learned more about Christianity in two and a half years than 20 years of being a Christian. So yeah, like basically, and this is why I like to talk to the Christians so much about the prophets, because that is what brought me to realization that, wait a minute, there's another religion that also believes in Jesus, but not as a son of God or God, um, just a prophet. Like I believed, like I, like the Bible says. So I was, it, honestly, it was, a, it was a mind-blowing experience. Like I truly was speechless because in my head, I'm, I'm like, how did I not know this? Like how did nobody tell me this? And then as I'm learning and as he's kind of telling me about this, and I'm coming to realize that, oh, my goodness, like the Western society has made this Islam like a bloodshed killing, like like all the pieces were coming together. Like like I, I wasn't aware of, of Islam, but I guess, uh, you know, the media, they make the 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 Middle Eastern men with, you know, the wear the turbans and the, the they call, like a dress, but obviously though, like they make the, those men seem like those are the terrorists, those are the killers. And so I'm connecting the dots and I'm like, wait a minute. No, they're not, they're not that they're, they're Muslims and they're, they don't want to hurt anybody. And why is, why does the world not know about this? So it kind of just was like all in my head. I'm, I'm bringing everything together. And then I, then I stop and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, God, like, is this the guidance that I've been praying for my entire life? After like those two couple weeks, I guess it just like, I don't, I really don't remember like that moment when I was like, I'm supposed to be Muslim, but I just kept like, I kept questioning and I kept asking God, like, is this the guidance? Is this the guidance? Cause I knew that Allah was going to bless me with something one day. Cause I didn't have, no, I had nothing. I was always so poor. I was moving from house to house and I was moving from family to family. And I, I was just so lost. I'm like, so I, but I knew, I just knew, I don't know why I knew this, but just, I knew that one day God was going to give me something that was like very special. And so I just kept asking, like, is this the guidance? Is this the guidance? And I don't know, like it just in my heart, like I, I, I just felt like Allah was finally like, yes, this is it. Like, I can't, like I was being pushed towards it. Like, this is it. This is it. This is it. And it was beautiful. And I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more. And it was like, I'm a sponge just soaking up all of Islam. And I won't be able to soak it all up until I die. But like, until then, I just want to, I just want the world to know the truth. Inshallah. Mm. So that's beautiful. And Allah says in the Quran that do they think they'll say that they believe and that they won't be tested. So my question to you is, and, and of course, I don't say this in an arrogant way because everyone has difficulties, right? But what were some of the biggest difficulties or hurdles that you've had after accepting it? Because it's one thing to say the Shahada and become a Muslim, but then to internalize that identity, it's another. Yeah, of course. Um, honestly, <laughs> so um, like, it was it was a couple of months actually prior to becoming Muslim that, uh, you know, I had been doing the music thing for about three years. Like I had I had gained like 25,000 followers on Instagram and I was like really putting like I was putting my name out there. I was doing shows and I was really glorifying like my sins. Like I was, you know, I was around drugs and I was drinking and. I was, you know, like I really was never a person to like be going out to parties. I never was like that. I like to stay at home. But like I said, the, the job that I worked was basically that environment. So I was really into all of that, that you guys see the people like in the in the dunya, just drowning in this dunya, like the party, the drugs, the everything. Like I was completely in the deepest hole of that. 
And so, but the beautiful thing about it is, is that it was two months before I became Muslim that I was like, I started getting really sad and I was like, you know what? I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about this stuff in my raps anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to keep talking about my sad life. Like this is depressing. I, I, my intention was to inspire people and show you that like, look, a, a, a girl from nothing can really make herself something, but I just felt like this wasn't the way anymore. And so I stopped, I just stopped writing. I just stopped writing rhymes. I just stopped and I was like, the time will come and and inshallah, like the right positive things will come and I'll be able to talk about those things. And um, so then, you know, two months later I became Muslim and um, like, it was very easy actually, alhamdulillah for me. I stopped drinking, I stopped doing all, I just stopped doing everything like, you know, it was very easy for me because I, I realized, I don't know, like something just clicked in me that was like, like I had a connection with God that I never had before. And like, if you don't have that connection, you really don't even know what I'm talking about because like truly like my whole life was just a 180 flip, boom, like, and it was easy for me, but the struggles, of course, I still struggle. Like, what do I struggle with? I mean, I don't know, like I struggle with my family and my friends. I think that my family and my friends, they think that I'm like brainwashed because when I first told them about, you know, Allah, they're like, they're so confused. They're like, they're like, oh, they started like leaving me on red. I was sending them like messages on group messages. Like I just really have like three good friends. And I would send them these because when I found Islam, I'm like, guys, like, look, Look what I found, like, you know, uh, in the Quran when Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam is talking to his father and he's saying, you know, I, there's been guidance that hasn't come to me that hasn't reached you yet. And like, when, when I read that, I'm like, that's literally how I felt. I'm like, like I, I ran home. I was not like worried or embarrassed. I ran home. I was like, guys, I'm Muslim. We need to be Muslim. Like Christianity is not it. And they were just like, like they don't, I put the head wrap on and it was like, they were scared to be around me. They didn't know who I was anymore. I'm like, so I had to take it off. So for them to even be comfortable around me, but, and they still are weird around me, but I don't know. Like that's really my biggest struggle as a revert. My biggest struggle is my family and my friends. I'm not close with them. Uh, but inshallah, like I know that they see a difference in me. I know they see the difference. Like, and it's been two and a half years now and you know it's like first they hate you then they fight you but then they start being curious because you're being consistent that's what i want all river uh you know, muslims to understand first they may hate you and they're gonna they're gonna fight you but if you just keep on it because i do see like like one of my cousins she asked me about you know what do, what do muslims believe about jesus Oh yeah, here we go. Like finally I'm getting some some leverage. But um she ended up it kind of was like a but see little things like that will come up. I have actually a really good friend um that she was, you know, I was trying to tell them about Islam. Like I said, they just kept leaving me on red. Like they just stopped they stopped talking to me. And um she they she straight up told me like I know my relationship with God and that's not it. I'm like, you don't even know what that is. Like, it was so sad, you know, but then, but then the last time I saw her, she asked me, why do you keep saying that? Bismillah. Every time I do anything, Bismillah. She was like, why do you keep saying that? I said, Bismillah, you know, in the name of God, in the name of Allah, you do these before you do, you say that before you do things and, you know, let there be blessing in it. And cause you know, you do everything for Allah. And she was like, hmm. you know, like, she even asked me another question. I'm like, see, so like they might hate you and they might fight you and they might be so like confused at you. But with time, inshallah, may Allah guide us all. And I think that I, I truly believe that Allah is going to, you know, make some of my family, hopefully all of them. But I think that there are people in my family that they are going to Allah's going to open their hearts. So biggest struggle mm -hmm. is family and friends, not, and, you know, not being uh, not so much my family and friends anymore, and that's it. Okay, so, and before it's I, not, hold up, yeah. hold up, hold up, hold up. 
I just got to get going here. So I just wanted to, you know, say, you know, forgive me for this. But definitely, like, I think this is amazing thus far. And, you know, I'm a viewer myself. So I, one thing that I wanted to throw out here that I've noticed with you and with all the, all the other reverts is that it's like Allah brings us to our lowest point before we actually embrace Islam. Because I myself had to come to the lowest, lowest, lowest point in my entire life before I was like, okay, yeah, it is, I got to do something. I got to do something here. So I just want to say I noticed that. Um, I'm very intrigued. I want to hear more about the story. So I'll definitely tune into this podcast video once we have it recorded and we have it up. Uh, but with that being said, may Allah bless you and fill your life with Madaka. And assalamu alaikum, y'all. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. So yeah. my first question that comes to my mind is, did you have a preconceived notion before Islam? No, um, I, I just wanted to tell you about, there was, um, you know how they talk about after 9-11 basically was when all the media propaganda stuff started happening. Like, um, I guess, see, and that's what I'm like, I guess I wasn't really paying attention to it, but that, that just shows you that even though I wasn't really paying attention, it was still affecting me because the first time I ever got on an airplane, I was uh, 21 years old. And I, I got on the airplane and I saw um, a man, must have been must have been Muslim. He was in a white robe, mm -hmm. a turban on his head. And it's not that it was because that's a Muslim or that's a you know. I felt like I guess that maybe maybe uh, without realizing it, seeing on TV how they portray these mm -hmm. uh, you know mm -hmm. men on that side of the world. That's what I, I got a sting in my heart. Like I got scared. Like because they, I know what it is because they're always talking about like. Those are the men, like, those are the type of men that did 9-11. So, you know, they're always going to want to try to bomb the plane. I'm like, yo, so I had to I had to think about that and realize it. But it was never like Muslims are that. Um, people that follow. I did not. I literally did not know that there was a religion called Islam. And um, or or um, I didn't know, like, that the Jews were also, like, the we believe all the, pretty much the same prophets. Like I really mm. was that ignorant. I, I did not have those conceived notions at all. Yeah. So I want to, I want to say something. When you said the airplane thing, I want to, I want to let you know that I'm a born Muslim like Rami, but we didn't really come to Islam till later in our life. Right. Just like, just like you and brother on health. So we're similar in that sense, but despite being a most being a born Muslim, when I went on an airplane, I saw someone that was dressed in like the Arab way. And I had those same thoughts too. And it just goes wow, to wow. how even though I was born into Islam, how much the brainwashing and the programming and the conditioning that we have in Western media has affected me in a subconscious level because it wasn't until that instant that I didn't realize it. But that that begs another question now. Aside from that, did how did you how was your perception of Islam towards women specifically? And how did that change? Because a lot of people, a lot of feminists, they think that Islam is a religion that favors men and not women. Right, right. Um, honestly, and, and I'm, I'm being 100% honest, I literally, I didn't, I hadn't, I hadn't ever seen a Muslim woman. I had never seen a woman uh, covering her hair. Definitely not in, uh, like, in person. Um, and if I did see it maybe on TV or something, I, uh, you know, I, I don't remember. I truly don't remember. So I think that was like, that was the thing when I was learning, you know, Islam at the, at the first it was it was coming to me like like I guess like subconscious thoughts and things that I had seen were kind of coming to me and I'm realizing like I'm putting the puzzle pieces together like oh you know uh, like and there it's not that like there these Middle Eastern people are bad like they're attributing this to Muslims I was realizing that oh they've been talking about Muslims this whole time this is what people try to make you know the Western world is trying to make everybody think that these people want to hurt us and that's just not the case like I remember asking I was like how does the world not know about Islam and to keep it to keep it on like Muslim women Actually, because of my job and what I was doing, you know, I, I actually got a lot of attention because of my physical appearance, a lot of attention from male and females. A lot of people 
would would come up to me and 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 literally ask me like I literally can't tell you how many times this happened in my life. Like, is your hair real? Like, is your hair real? How do you get it like that? Like, oh my, you're so pretty. Like I, and alhamdulillah, like, you know, of course, as humans, we like attention. And for a little while, for like a couple of years, it was cool. Like, no, thank you. Like it kind of boosted my confidence because I never was the cute girl. I was never the pretty girl. And I was never the popular girl. I was, I was, I was the one that was trying to fit in that would really do the most to, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would try to go and get these expensive. I would have a hundred dollars and I could have, I could have bought a whole bunch of new clothes at Walmart, but no, I would go to the mall just to get two shirts and a pair of jeans so I could look cool like that girl. Like I was that girl. I'm not going to be shy about telling you guys that. Am I that girl now? Absolutely not. Cause that's really what, when, um, when I, when I accepted a song and I'm seeing that, okay, these women, why they cover their hair and it's not like I had a bad thought about it. I really was like, why? And when I, you know, obviously it's because a lot tells us. So a law commands the woman to be modest and the man to be modest and cover yourselves. And, and, um, basically because of my job and because of the, the attention and the fake attention that I would get, um, I realized that people, people only talk to me because of like, they think I'm, you know, and, it, and so you see that, okay, men are only talking to me because they want, you know what? And then women will, it's crazy because girls, it's so sad that females are like this. And um, we will, we will, I, I, I truly don't feel like I've ever been like this, um, but girls will, you know, you're so pretty. And, and then like, after they tell you that it's like they become envious and jealous of you and then they treat you a different way. Or you got the girls that will give you like the stink eye, like, ugh. and so learning about hijab immediately, immediately I was like, I saw the, uh, I saw the wisdom in it. And I immediately, like I put on a bandana, like I didn't wear a complete hijab at first, but I put on a bandana and I was like, because yeah, like I was, I would, I got tired of people just coming up to me because of my hair. Like I, it really was just like, I saw the wisdom in the hijab and you know what? A lot, I just want to say, because maybe there's some uh, Muslim born Muslim sisters watching revert sisters watching. I want you to please, please hear me. When you live the philosophy, you understand the wisdom. Maybe you don't want to wear hijab. You don't understand. You want to, you want to feel like, whatever you want to feel like, trust me, if you just fulfill the commandment, if you do what Allah says, if you live the philosophy, then you'll understand the wisdom behind it. And then inshallah, you will appreciate it. And then and, and Allah will make it easy for you. And I know that that has happened with me. And so I just, I pray for all my Muslim sisters that may Allah make it easy for us in our, our journey to becoming more modest. Um, you know, at first I wanted to put on hijab, but I was like, not really that comfortable to put on like jilbab. Now I just want to go everywhere in my jilbab. I'm like, I feel like a queen in that thing, you know? So please Muslim sisters, like you are most beautiful. You are most beautiful, most protected inshallah when you are covered. I mean, Alhamdulillah. I mean, I mean, and uh, did you ever come across common revert struggles like, doubts and stuff like that because for me as someone that found islam later in my life there were phases where i come across channels like you know david wood and obviously now we have a knowledge to dissect and they've been reputations but it's like as someone that's not learned you come across that and you're like oh my god like it's true so did you have anything similar i do have one thing i do have one thing that <clears throat> because i said that i never knew muslims right hmm. but actually when i became muslim I found out that I did know one Muslim sister, um, but she didn't ever tell me she was Muslim. So there was no way for me to know she was. But um, I heard her say one day, like praying to Allah. She said something about praying to Allah. And I was like, you know, this is like four years before I became Muslim. I'm like praying to Allah. You know, this is my ignorance. Who's the law? I was like, I pray to God. You know, like for a lot. And so basically, fast forward, when I became Muslim, you know, my husband um, at the time, he was not my husband, but he would always say, you know, Allah, he would always refer to God as Allah. And um, sometimes he would say God. But I noticed that when he would say Allah, 
I would kind of feel like, because I said, dear Heavenly Father, my whole life. And I actually, when I prayed, I didn't even like saying the word God because I felt like it was just so like, there was nothing to it. You know, like rappers call themselves gods. So I'm like, God, it doesn't really hold that much weight to me. So I would always be like, dear Heavenly Father. So when I heard this word Allah, I was just so uneducated and so ignorant that I, I was like, it was, it was hard for me at first to start praying to Allah. But I did it. I did it. I started immediately. I was like, Allah, you know, I started using the word Allah when I, when I would pray. And it, it, yeah, it was a couple of months, two, three months went by of being, of, of being a Muslim. And I, yeah, I had, I remember one day I started having a doubt in my head and I'm like, have I made a mistake? Like, am I praying to like some different, you know, cause people ugh, like people on comments and, you know, Islamophobes that be like, Oh, Muslims pray to the moon God. And I'm like, now I'm like, you believe there's a moon God? Like, you really think that? No, there's only one God. Like, but at the time I'm like, did I make the right decision? You know, like I started getting this little like, no, like, no, I'm, I made the right decision. Like I truly, I think back on it and I think, yeah, that was Shaytan trying to get into my head. Tell me that, oh, have you made the right decision? Like, are you, are you really praying to God? Or are you praying to some other God? No, 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 no. Allah that was, that was the light of Allah, and he came and showed me that only he can guide. Like, he came to me, but then I drifted away from him, and it was like, only, truly, only Allah can, like, save us. Only Allah can guide, and Allah is only one. Like, after seeing that, yeah, it's like, there's no trinity. We got to stop saying trinity. There's no son, father, holy spirit. No, it's just Allah is only one, and then... And I think that's probably when I read the Quran because I didn't read Quran uh, until after becoming Muslim. So when I read Quran and I realized that Allah actually calls Himself Allah, like that is uh, that is God's name. And I think I think back, I'm like, in Christianity, we don't have a name for God. If you really think about it, like what do Christians call God? I guess some call Jesus like Yahweh or whatever, but. Most Christians I know, like, say, dear Heavenly Father, like, you don't even have a name for God. I thought that was something that was really, like, kind of, you know, mind-boggling. Mm. So, alhamdulillah, that, that was really my only doubt. But then after that, after that dream, I truly was like, no, like, I made the right decision. And so now, you know, it's not to say that I have those same doubts or any, like, just sometimes maybe if I have, like, a, a, a moment of low iman, I go back to that dream and I think about Allah, like, coming to save me and and um, it literally saving me from the darkness. Like, and I just wanted to relate that to, like, the dunya because, you know, we, as Muslims, we know that, like, you know, Allah says in the first of the chapter, chapter uh, Surah Baqarah, that they have a, a barrier, a seal over their eyes, hearts, and their ears. And I swear, like, uh, as a as a as a revert as a, a Christian before, I truly I see I understand that because I truly had a barrier over my ears and my eyes and my heart. I remember that time when I was deaf, dumb, and blind. And so the fact that I know Allah has truly like once I became Muslim, it's like I got brand new eyeballs and I got brand mm. new ears and I got a brand new heart. And I can I, I read the Quran. Oh my goodness, when I read the Quran for the first time, I was like, it just, it just, it, the fire got bigger inside me to like want to share Islam and tell the world about it. So, yeah, there's, alhamdulillah, only Allah can guide you. So may, may Allah guide all the, the Muslims and the non Muslims. I mean, I mean, Rami, bro, yeah. do you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. It's so always that when, you know, after Mus uh, after Brooklyn became Muslim, is that when she became Muslim Brooklyn? When you wanted to start. So I was gonna. I was wondering if you're gonna ask me about this. Um, nobody's ever asked me like, where? Why do you call yourself Muslim Brooklyn? I don't know if you guys um, know about this uh, brother. Um, he he he's a revert, and he used to try to do. I think I think I remember correctly. He wanted to be like a, a artist, a rap artist, but then he became Muslim, and he calls himself Muslim Bilal. Mm. Have y'all heard of Muslim Bilal? Yeah. And he makes like, he makes, uh, what are they called? Like nasheeds now, like mm. really good ones. And so that's actually where I got Muslim Brooklyn. <laughs> I like, my name is Brooklyn with a B. And I was like, you know, it's, it's not like I was trying to like come up and be like a rapper uh, mm. of Islam. No, no, no. Like I was kind of, I was like done with the music thing. Because mm. once I became Muslim, I realized like, 
yeah, the, the music thing is like maybe inshallah in the future I'll be able to do some like a nice written spoken word or something inshallah if it comes. Uh, that's not really where my mind is. Mm. But um, yeah, when I, 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 I just wanted to share videos. I just wanted to read these books of, about Islam to the people. And I, I when I made TikTok, I said, what, what should my name be? And I came across Muslim Bilal and I said, I'm going to be Muslim Brooklyn. So I'm Muslim Brooklyn. <laughs> You just call me Brooklyn, but yeah, Muslim Brooklyn. That's, let me let me let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer if it's too personal, but you mentioned you had a, not the best relationship with your mom growing up, right? And you lost your father when you were young. So, how has that relationship changed after you became Muslim? You, um, I think you cut out with my mom. Did you say my mom? Yeah. So how how did that relationship with your yeah. mom change after you became Muslim? Yeah. Yeah, basically, um, basically, my mom, I was not around her for the first 23 years of my life. Like, like she lived, she lived like 45 minutes away from me, but I just never, I, I maybe once a year, like I would get to like, I would, I would go see her, but she just really was going through her own struggle and trials that it wasn't like a mother daughter relationship at all. So, but, um, uh, I started talking to her more about 23 years old. I kind of started talking to her more because she finally got clean. Alhamdulillah, my, fi- my mom, my mom, she finally like got off of, uh, you know, all the things that she was doing. And I think it's because my brother died. I have an older brother and a little sister. My older brother, he, he went to prison for 10 years. And a month after he got out, he died in a car crash. That was like three years ago now. So, um, so basically, like, I didn't even get to see him. And that was really hard for my mom. I know, even though my mom didn't raise my brother either, it was obviously really hard for her. That was obviously like, I can't imagine that, but she ended up getting very cleaned up and we started talking more and, you know, we, we it was the first time that we ever had a relationship um, and it wasn't like the best one, but it, you know, work in progress. Uh, so yeah, around the time that I became Muslim was when obviously like we, I, me and my mom, we were talking the most and maybe every once, every four or five months, I would go like stay, stay a weekend with her. And, um, I, I became Muslim and, um, a year later, literally like exactly one year later is when she just kind of started asking me questions about it. And, um, she wanted to, she wanted to hear me out. Like unlike, unlike the rest of my family, she wanted to hear me out. And I told her, you know, all these things about, do you believe Jesus? Like is the, is God son of God? And da, 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 da. Like, you know, I was telling her about the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And, and, and it made sense to her. It made sense to her. And so I think a couple more months went by and she was like, I want to read the Quran. And I said, okay. So I, I gave her a Quran and she read it. And afterwards I asked her like, what do you think about it? You know? And she was like, well, I think it's from God. I don't think anybody else could have wrote this except, you know, not a human. It had to have been from God. And so I was like, oh yeah. Like I didn't even push it on her, but one day she called me and you know, we were kind of talking about it. And she, I said, do you believe that the prophet Muhammad is a, is a prophet that he, you know, that he was the final prophet, at least them. And she's like, yeah, I do. I said, do you want to come? Do you want to be Muslim mom? And she was like, I do. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, she, uh, me and Gohar, we gave her Shahada. And that was, that was, yeah, my, me and my mom, my whole family and friends of all the people I know, it's me and my mom that have uh, become Muslim. So yeah, wow. it's a good relationship wow. now. Yeah. That's beautiful. I respect my mom now more because of Islam, because Allah tells me so in the Quran. I respect her more. And, you know, it's it, I, it's hard for me to she's my mom. But because I just never had that relationship with her, it's more like a it's more like a friend relationship. But she's my mom. And I, I, I'm actually it seems like I'm the one that teaches her. I teach her and that's fine. And alhamdulillah, we uh, we get along and and. You know, she watches all my videos and she supports me. And she was my biggest supporter when I was doing music. And it was a little hard for her when I made that transition too. She wanted me to keep making music. She wanted me to like keep doing what I was doing because I was really making a name for myself. And, but then after about literally here until recently, maybe like six, eight months ago is when she finally was like, okay, I'm glad you're not doing music anymore. I'm glad that I'm glad that you cover and I'm glad that you stopped, you know, doing that work. And I'm she and it finally she came to realization. Alhamdulillah. So good, 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 good relationship with my mom. She's a blessing. Alhamdulillah. May Allah grant her the highest. Gen- I mean, Allah. 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 Allah.
Allah. So I want to ask more about your platform. When did you decide, you know, this is a beautiful message and I need to portray it to the masses. I need to tell people my story about how Brooklyn became Muslim and Muslim Brooklyn. And uh, was this before your mom converted after? Yes. So I think, okay, so I converted I, on April 6, 2020. And it was that summer, like June, that, you know, see, in my head, I'm like, I have to share this with the world. Like, I have to tell everybody that I can about this. And since my family and my friends weren't listening, I had to go tell somebody. So I'm, I like made a new TikTok account and um, I had a bunch of, you know, like beginners books for, for reverts to, you know, learn Islam. And so I, alhamdulillah, like it's not from me. This is from Allah. Allah put it in my head to just, just read from the books, just, just make videos and start reading from these books, you know? And, and so that's what I did. And I remember the first video that I made, the first video I made that like blew up. Um, I was talking about Allah. I said, you know, Muslims, the reason why we call God Allah, you know, it's like, it's just an, it's just an Arabic word for the God, like the one true God, like the only God that can hear our prayers. You know, it's just that, you know, even Arab Christians, they say Allah. And so I just want to say like three, three and a half years of me doing music and um, it glorifying my sins and putting money into it, making music videos, going to studio time, putting putting my heart and my, my energy, my time, my tears, everything. I was putting so much into the music and I was losing money. I was losing my energy. I was like, I was losing what I should be like, felt like I should be gaining three and a half years hmm. in five minutes of talking about Allah. I gained more success than I did in three and a half years of talking about the dunya. SubhanAllah. Wow. Five minutes of, of making a video and just trying to tell people like, you know, like I just, I just, I didn't know where to start. I just like, it just, okay, I'm going to make a video. And then I went and I went to my windowsill and started saying, you know, this is why we say Allah. And it blew up. Like I hadn't, I was like, I was, it caught me off guard. I did not expect that. So I just look at it as a humble. I'm very grateful because I put so much of myself into trying to become uh, an artist, a recording artist that I see now that look, it took me five minutes to make that video. And I got so much love from all the Muslim brothers and sisters and, and so much just uh, kind words and, uh, you know, obviously hate from the Christians, but period, like more success in five minutes than I did within three and a half years. Like that really is a sign to me and it should be to other people. So yeah, I just kept making the videos. I kept reading from my books and I just wanted to tell people like the truth. Alhamdulillah. 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 So how long ago was that first video? I don't know if I missed the date. You just had yeah, a uh, about, I think it was around June or July of 2020. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I think it should still be up on my page. But at the time, uh, I wasn't wearing hijab correctly. So I know at one point about a year ago or maybe like eight months ago, I had actually went through my, my page and I deleted all the videos where my neck was showing. But I think in that particular video, I have a, a jacket on that was kind of high. So I think it's still on my page and it'll be one of the very first videos I posted about, you know, Allah and Islam. Yeah. So has your goal of your page or maybe your objects that you, you know, objectives and, and what you want to talk about, has that changed since you first started? So now when you have more of a fan base, have you realized, well, maybe I need to start focusing on this or has it remained the same ever since? Um, I would say that like, um, it's the same, but the thing like, as you know, I, I listen to podcasts and uh, I listen to Kalam Institute podcasts, like all day, every day. Like I, I, it was very easy for me to give up music, which is crazy. Cause I was making music. I felt like it gave me life, but I was it, very quickly. I was like, I could be learning about Allah and his messenger. So, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> 
I'm like killing my brain with this music. So I listen to podcasts and everything all the time. And I've learned that Muslims should give da'wah to Muslims first. If we become better Muslims and we share the, you know, the beauty of Islam with other Muslims, then the, the non-Muslims will be attracted to that and they will, they will want to come towards it. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of a struggle for me. Like I want to like, you know, I really want to help Muslims become better Muslims, which will help myself become a better Muslim, obviously first. But um, but I just feel like I feel like because I was a Christian, like if they're going to listen to anybody, especially like the girls, like maybe I can relate with them the best. And so that is why I do like I speak about Christianity so much. It's not so much like, oh, I got more followers now. I should do this or like or like I, I, I really like I really I try hard to keep my intention like I just need to share Islam. I just need to share the truth. I just want to keep making videos and and, and t- because if if I for 25 years didn't know about Islam and I and I didn't know that Allah was, you know, just like another name for that we call out to God as like then I know that there's millions and millions and millions of more people because just the town that I'm from, the people that are there, they, they look at me and they're so confused. They don't know what's going on. So I just like every day, my motivation when I make videos is to just share Islam, share the truth, share the truth for the sake of Allah. And may Allah, you know, open the hearts of those who are, that they don't know. I just, I just want people to know. So inshallah, um, Inshallah, I try to bring Christians to Islam, and I, I truly want to. Um, it's not that I started wanting to inspire Muslims. I, I truly like. I just wanted to talk to the Christians. I just want to tell the Christians, like, look, this is what this is what it is. But then I started getting born Muslims. I guess really looking up to me. They like to hear. Uh, they like to see me, and they're like, you know, you motivate me to be a better Muslim. And so, Alhamdulillah, that's great. That's beautiful. And so, Inshallah, I can keep doing that for the sake of Allah always. But at the, but but my intention, uh, Rami, is usually to just I just want the people that don't know Islam to know Islam. And maybe there's more Muslims that kind of drift away because I feel like this is normal. Mm-hmm. Any religion that you're in, unless unless you have like, you know, strong religious Muslim parents and you don't have and they, you know, if they don't have that guidance and that like uh, example, then. <laughs> Even Muslims, born Muslims, they can maybe, inshallah, see me and 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 see that Islam is the only thing on this earth that matters. Islam, Allah, and, and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is the most important thing. All this dunya going around us, it's BS, guys. Do not fall into it. Do not fall into the trap. It's it's literally all a trap. And I've lived the life. So please take it from me. Do not go put these tattoos on you. Do not go and think that you need to like go and be out with your friends and do this to party and have fun. Like that's not the way. It's not the way. Like your life could be over tonight and only Allah is important. Just please remember that. I want people to just know that. Allah. I, you know, I was going to ask as the final question, do you have a message for the viewers? But I feel like you just that's answered. it. MashaAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. And I do want to say to the viewers, smash that like button. If we can get 5,000 likes on the stream, inshallah, we'll invite Sister Brooklyn for a live Q&A. Yes. I don't know if you're ready yes. for that, but inshallah, there are a few questions and then you can just answer on the spot. Yes, guys, run off the likes. And yes, I mean, I, I hope that... I, may Allah bless you, all the brothers, the, the three Muslims, and uh, may Allah increase you and grant you all the success in this world and the next. And I truly pray that Allah increases you with your iman. All the Muslims, all the Muslims, please just pray for Allah to increase our iman, our ibadah, make it easy for us. And 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 let's continue to grow with our knowledge of, of Allah's perfect deen. And let's try our best to follow uh, Prophet Muhammad, the last and final messenger that God sent. Um, and that includes Ibrahim and Noah, Moses, Jesus. They all set good examples for humans. The same God sent every single one of them. And if we just try to learn from them, learn from them. Don't learn from from your friends. Don't learn from these, you know, these Instagram models. It's not it. You guys, like Allah is perfect deen. Islam is the only thing that matters. And may Allah help guide us all and just make it easy for us to follow it. I mean, I mean, 
اللهم امين اللهم امين طيب and with that yeah. we said اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وكنا أذاب النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that the bridge between belief and disbelief is abandoning Salah. If you're struggling with your Salah right now, well, we got the perfect solution for you. And that solution is the Adan app. This cell phone, we usually have it and it's using us instead of us using it. But with the Adan app, you can use it in perfect alignment with your life. The Adan app is already used by 40 million believers around the world. Why? Because it caters to your Islamic lifestyle. On top of the Salah times, you get du'as, dhikr, the Islamic calendar, Ramadan calendar, Zuhur and Iftar times, Hajj and Umrah guide, Qibla finder, and much more for free. So download the Adan app now.